I guess uh, one thing that comes to mind is, so we've spoken, of, well, we we know why we believe in Bitcoin uh, here on the podcast. I think everyone sat here knows, right? Um, but when it comes to, uh, say, a sports organization anywhere in the world, or even just a general organization anywhere in the world that is listening to this, and obviously, okay, they go, well, you know, it takes them... Um, if you guys have taken like a, having one someone specifically dedicated to the role for adopting Bitcoin, um, and there are potential issues with accounting and all these different things, but obviously there's the good sides. What would you guys say have been like the? I mean, outside of the the, the most obvious, I guess, which is like international um, fans and being able to accept international payments without pissing about with you know SWIFT and, and other issues. Outside of those kind of two two sides of things, what would you say like the the biggest? What's made it? What's been made easier by? Um, becoming more Bitcoin focused as a company and, and running on the Bitcoin standard. And then I guess follow up just to that is if there's other people out there listening or sports organizations listening, you want to try and do this. Uh, you guys have been through all the, you know, lots of pitfalls and, and you know, you know, a lot basically compared to anyone else. So would you guys ever be, you know, would you encourage someone to reach out to you guys or is there someone you'd say they, they should reach out to, to, to kind of discuss that? We're open 24 seven, just like Bitcoin. So uh, yeah, send us a DM um, on, on Twitter. More, more than happy to chat to any sports organization. The quicker we, on board more teams uh you know the better for for the bitcoin sports league the better for the network the better for the community uh you know the better for the globe um yeah bitcoin's improved efficiencies you know across the board and even just small wins yeah we'll go back to yeah with, with players so we have international players that come to perth that need to set up uh an, an account to, for us to pay them in previously yeah so they would look uh google uh westpac branch okay go there uh, they realize it's an ATM. Oh, didn't realize they can't open an account. Then they'll go downtown, walk into a branch. The branch will say, Oh, we need your mother's uh, original birth certificate. It's like, What the fuck for? Well, to open an account with us. So then they go back home. Uh, the waste of the day walking around trying to f- open a fiat bank account. And then they've got training that night. And then just not in the headspace because they've just been dicked around trying to open a bank account. It takes them the best part of a week to open a bank account. They finally do it. They give us their details. The bank account's different to who we bank with. It takes another four days before the transaction can be complete. For the best part of their first two weeks in Australia, we can't pay them. And you know, the players just had a really, really bad experience. Um, yeah, again, look at lightning payments. If anyone's run a small business, and you know, had a point of sale system and you know, had, had a transaction for even whether it's you know, a cup of coffee and it's you know, what, you know, what's a cup of coffee, five, five dollars and they need to wait four days for it. And then when the money finally comes into their account, they see that uh, the point of sale system's taken 3% off them. You start calculating 3% on every transaction and compare it to the Lightning Network and then start multiplying that by one year on two years on three years in terms of your savings. And suddenly you realize why you need to start operating on a Bitcoin standard or making that first step to accepting Bitcoin payments. Um, and there's just all those little efficiencies that even if you took um, yeah, and, and looked at in isolation, uh, yeah, there's good enough reason to make, yeah, make some sort of adjustment to the way your business operates yeah, straight away just on those. Well, the message here to all the other sports teams is like, listen into what you just said. I mean, it makes getting well, payments easier. And- yeah, but it start today because... Yeah, you know, this will be dictated by the players moving forward. It's not, you know, Perth Heat dictating this. Within years, players will be demanding that their organisation pays them in Bitcoin. So the quicker you make the change, the better your organisation will be moving forward because you'll understand and you have the processes in place. Um, obviously, as time passes, uh, you know, the education, the playbooks will be out there for people to cut, paste and follow. But the quicker you can immerse yourself in this as an organization, uh, the better you've got chance of a long-term success for your, uh, for, for your organization winning championships. Uh, pretty good time to buy at the moment, I would have thought. You start hodling those coins, I think it's going to be a pretty good war chest uh, you know, in, in, in the future to, uh, to, to continue you know, momentum as a championship winning team. And, and I would add to that, like, you know, we, we have gone on uh, during this podcast and um, in just some of the complexities that have come with with operating on a Bitcoin standard, uh, you know, obviously not every organization is going to start like that. Uh, you don't have to. And now, although it seems complex to do a number of these things like paying players in Bitcoin and, and putting it on the balance sheet and things like that, it, it has never been easier, which is really a testament to the talent in the space. It's never been easier to just get started accepting Bitcoin payments. You know, if you can sign up for an email uh, as a business, you can start accepting Bitcoin. Uh, so it's, it, there really is no excuse there. And as soon as you do get that initial interest 
right? As soon as you just sign up, oh, I'm going to take Bitcoin payments. Uh, as soon as you get that interest, that little bug, uh, you know, you start to put the pieces together and that just drives that, uh, the want to figure out more and to learn more. And then that takes you deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. And, uh, you know, before you know it, you go from uh, signing up for that uh, Bitcoin payments provider to, you know, 12 months later, you are, uh, you know, you're going to be fully orange pilled. So uh, I would say to companies, businesses, big and small alike, uh, it's just, it's never been easier to dip your toe in the water and sort of see what all the buzz is about because, uh, you know, you just need those. Sometimes you just need that, the physicality of those early wins of just saying like, I don't understand how Bitcoin payments work. You know, you've, I've heard it takes 10 minutes. There's something about a block. I got to do something with uh, magic internet numbers. Like, I don't get it. Um, or you could just have a lightning payment and have it instantly show up. And uh, there's no sort of counterparty risk in there. You, you get your money instantly. There's no way to charge it back or anything like that. People get that. Like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that actually works better. Actually, that's quicker uh, than uh, what we were using before with the FPOS machine or the debit machine, or whatever it is. And those little wins, they start to stack up pretty quickly. The one great thing about Bitcoin is that you never stop learning and, you know, you, you just always constantly need to stop to learn about Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, as an organization internally, do you regularly have this like list of seminars, workshops where you, you know, always talk to you or your players, your staff about, you know, the best, you know, Bitcoin safety practices, you know, you know, obviously you can body accidents, uh, you know, uh, you know, how to handle private keys you know how to you know the best wallets to use do you always have these conversations or do you have them on a case let's say the you know, player comes to you staff come up to you and say hey this is the problem i have or do you have this do you constantly have these discussions based on maybe new things you learned you know just to keep them updated and you know since you're now operating on the bitcoin standard obviously there has to be some kind of you know um best bitcoin press you know best practices you know you can suggest you know hey or in, don't keep your coins on exchanges or you know always you know take them you know put them on a custodial wallet do you have this you know conversation absolutely the conversations don't stop uh, the conversations between patrick and i don't stop uh you know in, in terms of me uh improving my knowledge it uh yeah i don't think uh, we've even scratched the surface in some ways in terms of you know, the educational um, and we'll continue to you know do that throughout uh, throughout our team and our players and our our, our staff and uh, it's it's important we provide that uh, that resource too. Yeah, and, and I would just add to that it, what what is really important is the same thing that we are doing. Um, you know that we're sort of outwardly projecting, uh, wanting to reflect the best of what Bitcoin has to offer and try and keep people at least what we think is uh, is the safest best path forward in the most um, honest and transparent way that we can. Uh, we're trying to do that within the company as well, right? Steve, as the CEO of the company, you, your responsibility is the, the health of the organization. Um, and it does us no good, no, no services, no, no, no uh, nothing good comes from someone inside of the organization having a bad experience. Um, and we understand that for a, a lot of the people uh, in the organization, this is the first uh, initially when we had these conversations and they were learning these things that this is their first exposure to this and it's going to take a little bit of time um, and they need to learn this so that they can build conviction so that when moments like this happen, that they, that they are happy with uh, the decisions that they've made and the, the security that they have taken. So I would say it's it's been paramount inside of the organization to make sure that we are high on education and that it is presented in a way that isn't overwhelming. You know, going back to that, really the translation part or the translator part of being uh, a chief Bitcoin officer is making sure that you are reaching the audience where they are, you know, really speaking to them as to what level they are operating to. Like you're not going to lead with uh, being a sovereign individual and not having the government uh, confiscate your funds, right? Like that's not what was problem number one inside of the organization day one. It was like, okay, I'm going to get paid. I don't understand how I, how do I get, how do I get the things, <laughs> you know, like, how do I, how do I get the coins? It's like, okay, no, that's not, it's not really coins. Uh, that's just a name. It's like the, those things and, and having those conversations, you have to have the ability to recognize all of the different levels and be prepared to not dumb it down, but make it as simple as possible and as easily uh, digestible uh, as possible. And that will never stop. Like, of course, we are developing best practices inside of the organization for people that are new. Um, and every year, like we said, how things are going to be different 30 days from now, 90 days from now. Uh, the next year after this initial season um, has, has finally come and passed um, and the players have gone through this entire process of onboarding, we're going to have a much clearer picture 
in 2023, we are going to be streamlined like you wouldn't believe because we will have gone through all of these things and had all these discussions um, and seen the problems that arise and come up with the best practices. And, you know, that's what we've done even in the small business world. Like, you know, you mentioned teams reaching out and getting in touch with us. Like we are constantly uh, in these meetings with companies that have these questions um, and we're developing behind the scenes our own sort of handbook, our own playbook as to what do you do? Uh, if you're a certain size organization and maybe you don't have access to all the resources that larger companies do, uh, what are some of the paths that you can take and what are some of the pitfalls that you can avoid that we have gone through? Because it's like, what's the point of us doing the work if we're just going to uh, shelter it for ourselves and just keep it here and, and not let anybody see so we can get uh, somehow get ahead of the competition? It's like, no, the, we want the, 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 the rising tide to lift all boats, right? It's like, we've done the work. You shouldn't have to now. It's like you should at least be able to avoid this so that you can help us, right? We want to get everybody up to speed as quick as possible so that the best idea wins. Like we don't want people left behind uh, thinking that, you know, they're not going to get as good of the ideas that we had because we put in the, the work or the research. It's like, no, that, that work is done. Now make it available, right? Be as transparent as we possibly can be. Uh, so the education is just uh, is, is paramount and, and, and hopefully we'll never stop. I'm sold. If I, if I had a sports team, I'd be, uh, I'd be setting up a separate call with you boys. So it's, uh, I think you've done a good job as far as I'm concerned anyway, you've done a good job in, uh, in, yeah, I think in, in presenting the realities of the situation, like, yeah, there's some things you've got to work out and, and if you want to go full, full way, but also like you can just dip your toe quite easily and kind of take it from there. And, and once you do that, you'll, you'll begin to understand the value more and more as well of, of that. Um, I think really, yeah, especially as you said, like international play, if you're bringing international players in, you've got international fans, those two things you can massively increase just by accepting Bitcoin um because it makes life so much easier uh it's like when I, you know if you go to el salvador and you get there and you actually realize oh well i don't really need any you know any real dollars or anything i just kind of rock up with my phone and just go beep beep and just pay for everything and it makes life so much more easy so um yeah i think it's uh, i think it's awesome um i did have one question i know you guys are super focused on bitcoin but do you accept any other cryptos or stable coins or anything like that or is it bitcoin only? We're the bitcoin baseball team we're not a shit coin sports team <laughs> that's it yeah. bitcoin bitcoin uh bitcoin 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 that's uh well that's a, i think that's a pretty good note to end on to be honest um but yeah well i say i appreciate you guys coming on it's been really interesting it's been very different for our, our conversations to, to like talk to a sports team an organization that's going through really like full-on adopting uh bitcoin uh, in every aspect of the business so it's been fascinating for me uh, for sure and i'm sure it has been for the listeners uh, do, do you guys is there anything you want to well i mean is there anything you want to plug before we we head out towards anywhere people can get hold of you guys what where they should be following you let, let everyone know yeah absolutely all, all, all the uh, the regular channels so our, our website which is perfect.com.au and there's a uh tab at the top which uh, has bitcoin and leads you through to some of our uh, our bitcoin pages obviously on on twitter at, at perth eight and um, we're actually running a competition at the moment uh you know globally for fans or the network to design our bitcoin jersey for this season um and that competition actually closes next week so if you've got a couple of design skills and you're good with some crowns or a uh, or a texter uh get designing we'd love with yeah there, there, there are no rules for this competition um it's pretty simple What's your interpretation of the uh, of, of the Bitcoin baseball team, and what would you like to see? A jersey, uh, put something you know, on on paper and send it through to us. So uh, you can find those links through the website. Um, and yeah, continue to to, to support us uh, throughout the course of the season. There's a fair bit of pressure on us now, um, you know, to win the championship. As we know, Bitcoin always wins, and the Bitcoin baseball team can't finish second. So uh, yeah, we we we're, we're, we're geared up for a championship season, and I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for your interest in the story. Thanks for chatting to us. Yeah, we'd also like to. Congratulate yourselves and bit refill on the, you know, the wonderful work uh, you've pioneered throughout the uh, you know, o over the years as well. And that's been awesome to follow as well. So uh, yeah, we, we'd like to thank everyone for their support. I was going to ask how to get my hands on a jersey, but it sounds like I should wait until the contest is over. Uh, now, we've, we've certainly got jerseys uh, online at the moment, uh, which you can uh, you can purchase. Uh, but Or you can just yeah, design your own. I'd love to see one coming uh, from yourself in, in, in the coming days. Uh, let's see what you've got uh in the uh, in the design space and uh, bring something together or bring something alive for us, that'd be awesome. If it's down to me, it's gonna be a stick man uh, t shirt, probably. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm like, Bitcoin wizard, MS Paint, yeah, <laughs> just shove the Bitcoin wizard on there. Uh, That's it. That's it. it becomes <laughs> iconic, design done. Um, yeah. No, thanks guys for coming. It's been, it's been, yeah, it's been great. Honestly, I've really enjoyed it and it's been great to meet you guys um and if i'm ever in australia on the other side of the world then i i need to drop by uh, it'd be cool to make a pilgrimage just to head over and watch a game and, and and kind of talk to people and use bitcoin and get a jersey so hopefully 
I can add that to my own bucket list. Um, but yeah, uh, everyone out there listening, we hope you've had an awesome time as well. Uh, and I hope that you guys have an awesome day, week, month, year. Keep being happy. Keep loving life. Keep supporting Perth Heat. Uh, and keep buying Bitcoin. And we'll see you all soon. Take care.